Good evening and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Shop with Russ. Here we are on Saturday night and we already have a chat section that is full and everybody's chatting around. Uh, Desert Bum Woodworking is out there. Ken McCrory, uh, Jimbo, uh, Dennis, uh, Luann. I saw her out there. She's been out there. She's my uh, newer follower. Uh, or Luanna, I'm sorry, Luanna, Luanna, Luanna Pierce. Um, but she's out there in the chat. Oh, oh, Steve Good's out there in the chat. Hi, Steve. Oh, man, if we didn't have a full panel, I'll let you in. But unfortunately, we have a full panel tonight, Steve. But thank you all, all for already being out there and talking and having a lot of fun in the chat. I appreciate you out there so very much. Um, couple of things tonight we're going to be talking about the uh woodwork atlanta woodworking show myself uh matt haas and zach uh all were there this weekend had a blast i mean we really had a blast so we're going to be talking about that and some other things and also i've got a couple of giveaways for y'all guys i gotta figure out why we're some people are talking about figuring out some questions for you because I didn't have a chance to figure that out yet. But let me talk about my sponsors first, and that's another thing. Listen closely. My sponsors are Devobal Technologies for web design, development, hosting. Visit devobal.com, FastCap, innovative products for the professional woodworker. Go to FastCap.com. Rockler, 60 years of woodworking. Create with confidence. Visit rockler.com, Bearwood Supply Company. Your best choice for hard-to-find woodworking supplies. Go to bearwood.com. Cling Spore, the sanding specialist, woodworkingshop.com, and Seiko, the scroll saw specialist, Seiko.com. And last but not least, we are adding a new sponsor, and it is Scroll NATO. Yep, that's right. It is Scroll NATO. They have come on board, and if you wait until this rolls around in just a second, the picture will show up there. But the scroll NATO is dust collection for your scroll saw. Now, uh, here it comes up. Scroll NATO. But they also, he also has a drill NATO, scroll NATO, and he's came out with a band, one for the band saw too. Matter of fact, he was demonstrating that uh, at the woodworking show in Atlanta last weekend. So, but it's a band saw collection system. And he's given me the, and, um, there's a change coming. It will come out in April uh, on there's a new type, uh, a different type a way of setting up the scroll NATO that's coming out in April. The bandsaw thing is coming out on April online. That is where you can buy them on line right now. He's demonstrated them in the woodworking shows, but they're not actually available, but those are all coming out. So I've got some of the uh, newer ones. I actually, I wasn't supposed to say that, but I do. <laughs> So anyway, forgive me, Chris, but his name is Chris. He's a heck of a nice guy. And we had a lot of fun there at the woodworking show. And matter of fact, um, I was telling some of the guys earlier about this. Uh, uh, I've known him for a few years now and uh, have been using the product. And I love scroll NATO. It's to me, it is the best dust collection system for your scroll saw and hands down. Uh, and so while we were there, uh, I started talking to some of the people in the Gwinnett Woodworkers booth and got them interested. And then one of them even come and said, hey, have you seen that thing? Is it work? And I said, yeah, it works. I've got them on a couple of my scroll saws. Anyway, so before it was all said and done, I believe I sold seven scroll NATOs for him out between people that I'd talked to and the Gwinnett Woodworkers booth. Several of them bought the scroll NATO. So about seven scroll NATOs I sold him. So, uh, matter of fact, it was so funny because uh, after about the second or third one, because I told him, I said, hey, these are, man, these are good friends of mine. Can't you give them a break? So he was giving them a little bit of a break. So we were calling it the Rush Special there at the show. He said, just tell anybody that comes, just tell them I want the Rush Special and we'll, we'll give them the Rush Special here for the show. So it was really a, a lot of fun. And we'll get into that and just more into the, in a few minutes to, uh, what the heck is that guy over there? In a few minutes to uh, talk about the show, but I just wanted to say that about Scrollnado. He's on board now, so uh, hopefully we'll be giving away 
some scroll nados for uh, prizes here in the near future. So with that being said, let's let everybody introduce themselves. Let's start from my left, which is Brenda. Thanks, Russ. Good to see you back safe and sound from Atlanta. Congratulations on the new sponsor. Yep. Thank you. And I'm Brenda G from Brenda G's Designs. You'll find me all over the internet if you look up Brenda G's Designs, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, just about every place. I am an electric crafter and uh, I do a little humor too. So tune in to my channel, especially on Thursday nights. I do a live stream uh, with Matt Haas where we will blow your mind with amazing facts. Cool. Yeah, I've been there and watched them. There are a lot of good stuff that goes on there and a lot of fun. Uh, Chris. Again, Chris here from the old Cranky Workshop. Um, the shop is slowly coming back to life now that winter is over. I was out there today and started doing a little bit of turning. So hopefully we get some video projects going and planning out my uh, pallet project for this year. So, um, and by the way, before you go any further, Brenda, nice new do. Yeah. So these knuckle draggers won't mention it, but I can. Thank so, you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> Woohoo! Well, I'm back to you. <laughs> hold on. I was going to say also, I think about three or four people out in the chat have mentioned it before Chris even got to it. Uh, uh, Jimbo said, love the new hair, Brenda. Uh, Aussie man said, looking good, Brenda. Nice hair. So, yeah, they have a lot of people have already started noticing See? out there in the chat, too. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, I started to call her Debbie tonight just to <laughs> aggravate the situation. But anyway, uh, Dixon, you're next. Hey, Russ and everybody on the panel. It's Dixon Hoffman. At, uh, you'll find me on HoffmanScienceAndDecals.com and running around on Facebook and also doing some 3D prints. Now, what oh, cool. in the world is that, like a grabber? Yes, it's, it's, it's printed in one shot. Wow. Just like Zach has. <laughs> Printed in one shot and it works, huh? Yeah, you just have the tolerances right and then you just crack it loose and you're good to go. ABS oh. or PLA? PLA. PLA. Cool. cool. Very cool. Thanks. Uh, next is Katie. Hi there. I'm Katie. Uh, I'm on Facebook and that's about it. I come in to. to uh, uh, Aggravate the Jesus out of Russ and uh, and uh, take stabs at him when uh, at any time I find it convenient. <laughs> and she does too. Nice to have Matt. Hi everyone, Matt Haas from Awesome Wood Things. I make cool things out of wood in my shop, and sometimes I make cool things out of other materials, like these golden cool. ratio calipers. Glad to be here, back from the Atlanta Woodworking Show. Looking forward to talking about that. Thanks for having me on. Uh, is that printed? I scroll saw this. Yay! Okay, cool. <laughs> I thought that's what you did. Yeah, I thought I remember seeing it. Yeah, Team Scroll Saw. Is that um, now? Is that like a plastic or something? This is just the acrylic that um, Inventables will sell you. Oh, okay, okay. Put okay. On the X carve, but well, I know, didn't. I could tell it wasn't wood. Let's put it that way. It's not the best material because it's a little flexible, but it's mostly a proof of concept. And I've always right. wanted one. And these are like fifty bucks online, so I'm like, hey, I have a shop and some cheap materials, so why hey. not make it myself? Looks cool. I had posted a, a YouTube uh, where a guy explained all about the golden ratio, and he had a link to the pattern. It's a real nice looking pattern. I'll try to bring it back up on top if y'all are interested. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I'll post my patterns to awesome. What's supposed to be the difference between those and a regular like well, it's the middle is the um it marks the ratio 1.618 from the thing. And th the idea is that ratio repeats in nature everywhere you look. Right. You know, like the the fingers in your bones, like how they get bigger that's the ratio that we're talking about right and flowers how they have all the seeds around the center and snails that have the spiral they all spiral out at 1.68 to 1 ratio I, I it's love freaky saying it, the fibonacci it's ratio. the fibonacci sequence yeah, yeah. yeah. galaxies yeah. even in galaxies you know the spiral arms of the galaxy 
they they span they drift away from each other at one point six one eight to one. It's crazy. I, I guess my brain cells must be that one. That's the reason I'm so perfect. I'm never mind. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think your decimal point moved one one way or another. Right? <laughs> Shut up, Katie. Uh, go ahead, Al. <laughs> um, gee, after that, I don't know. I'll just say it again. Fibonacci. Hey, everyone. Uh, Great to be here, uh, Al Forte, Odessa Woodworking and Maker Shop, Kilroy seven nine seven six three, everywhere. Go look for me. Um, I have a uh, a giveaway going on right now for Maker's Rock. Uh, it's still not too late. You can uh, you can win the uh, the album art that uh, the collab has been putting together that Matt has organized and twenty some other uh, woodworkers have have participated in it. Um, one of them, um, uh, uh, the Carmichael Workshop, actually Tesla, the band, um, put a put a. Uh, I guess it was a tweet of of his uh, uh, album cover. It was awesome. But anyway, great to be here. And uh, back to I guess whoever's next. Uh, next is going to be Mr. Paul. That would be me, Paul's Paul Corliss from Paul's Messy Workshop. Uh, Paul's Messy Workshop on YouTube and on Instagram. And uh, those things that Zach printed and uh, and Dixon printed, are those on uh, Thingiverse, are they? Yes, yeah. they are. Oh, okay. Cool. And that's one print. Yes, one print. My grandkids love playing with this thing. I was going to scale it up maybe and make it like 12 inches long. I'd like playing with it. <laughs> it's a yeah it's just like those uh what do you call those things that you twirl yeah, yeah thinners yep. yeah i'm gonna uh, have to print one of those and see if it works cool so thanks for having me on russ you're welcome next is russ meadows let me see not on my screen zach's next my god <laughs> <laughs> russ meadows from the rusty nails which shop y'all can find me on facebook and Instagram, if you're looking for me. Now, I'm glad to be here and glad to see everybody. Great. Bye. And then uh, Zach. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, as you said, I'm Zach from Southern Ginger Workshop. You can find me just about anywhere. And uh, happy to be here. Great. Okay. So, uh, my experience uh, with the woodworking show was a fantastic one. And uh, I can tell about mine a little bit, but uh, also I want to get into, I know there was a lot of people and a lot of skepticism about the woodworking shows um, because Peachtree backed out of doing the woodworking shows this year. Now, the reason being, it was no animosity, no bitterness, no what going on between there. What happened was the uh, owner of Peachtree Woodworking, if I believe his sister, had cancer. And she is the actual one that put together Peachtree's part of the woodworking shows. Uh, she, you know, run the whole thing for him. And she, since she had cancer, number one, she had cancer. So I guess they didn't feel like even, you know, they wanted to take care of her first, which family's priority. Don't get me wrong. I totally understand that. And then second, since she was the one that ran, uh, run everything, they were just going to back out this year. From running they will be back next year uh so there was a lot of you know iffies if you know can i'll just go out and say it can the woodworking show survive without um peach tree being there because peach tree is was one of the biggest um uh, sponsors that they had or, or or vendors that they had in there and uh so much so from my understanding now don't quote me on this from my understanding they had like a couple of semis they actually had a semi truck loaded full of stuff that would go to one working sh one woodworking show, and when that one was over, it would return back to home base, which is in Atlanta, and the second one would go out the f while the first one was reloading. And I mean, a semi truck load of st stuff that they went to each each one of those shows, and so that is a lot, a lot, a lot of merchandise that uh, they were, you know, running to these shows and everything. So they wanted to know, you know, everybody was saying, could it survive? I think that even hampered uh, 
Uh, there wasn't near as many makers there this year. I noticed that right off the bat um, at uh, the Southern Woodworkers booth that is there has been. I noticed that. So I'd mentioned that to Zach and he says, yeah, he thought that that was part of the reason for that. But anyway, but they survived. It was a great show in Atlanta. Uh, for my opinion, it wasn't quite as big as it had been naturally because Peachtree took up so much space. And, but there was a lot of vendors there and Peachtree was there in Atlanta and they uh, had a couple of booths like the Craig booth and another booth and their own booth was set up there and they were selling stuff there at the Atlanta show. But uh, my experience also was, as I want to talk about real quick was the Gwinnett woodworkers had invited me to the Atlanta woodworking show to be in their booth, which I thought was cool as crap. Uh, so I spent the weekend in their booth and they set up a scroll saw for me and they even had a banner set up for me or a poster set up for me and uh, where I was scrolling in front of people and it was just the right place because their booth was, as you come in the front door, you had to walk right past their booth pretty much to go anywhere else. So they had Hans, which is a scroller with the Gwinnett Woodworkers right on the corner, then me and my sign and then the West of uh, the Gwinnett Woodworkers in the booth. And uh, <clears throat> I literally saw hundreds. I'm not going to say thousands, but I think it was thousands, hundreds of people so much that my voice on uh, Friday and Saturday night was actually hoarse from talking to so many people. I brought this horses that I call that modern horses. I had the uh, thing up behind me. I think I've still got it uh, inside. I didn't bring it up, but the, uh, uh, scroll saw piece I did to call it the uh, conventional or modern horse or whatever that I scrolled out. I could usually, I can normally do that. And I think I did that one night on the uh, scroll saw show in an hour. Uh, it took me two days to finish that. And when I say that is because that's how many literally people were coming by and asking me, I scroll for a few seconds and somebody would stop me and want to know about a scroll. saw, I want to know about this, want to know about patterns. And I sent them to my good friend, Steve good. Um, so I uh, want to know about blades. I wanted to know, I mean, just tons and tons and tons of questions. And like I said, it tells you something that I could do a scroll saw pattern in an hour. And it took me two days. That's how little scrolling I got done. As soon as I get started, somebody come by and ask me stuff. But that's what I was there for. That's what uh, Rob or the Gwinnett Woodworkers booth wanted me there for is at, you know, answering people's questions and uh, being out there in the public and everything. And I had a blast. I saw little kids. I saw older people. Uh, you name it. They were all there asking questions. And I really did have a blast doing that. So. Uh, my takeaway for way from it was, um, yeah, it was a good show. Um, there might not have been as many vendors there as normal, and it might not have been as big as normal, but I think it was every bit as good as everyone I've ever been to. So that was just my takeaway. So uh, let's uh, uh, let's see. Z is at the end of the alphabet, so I'll let Matt go first, Zach. So Matt. Okay, my impressions of the show. Well, um, I mostly go to meet the people and you know interact in person with everyone I interact with on the interwebs. But um, I, I like the show. I did a lot of shopping. I picked up a little bit here, a little bit there. I'm gonna make some of these cool bottle stoppers. I got some turning stuff. And yes, I do own a lathe and I just put it together and um, going to be doing that on the channel here soon um you know the, the joke is you can do the show floor in about nine minutes but no, really not nine minutes but it doesn't take long to get through um the show floor um i did run into a popular woodworker he kind of keeps to himself colin Kinnett. do you know him I've uh, heard of him, and I don't. I I might have met him this weekend, but I don't really know for sure. Yeah, I, I he's he does a lot of uh, tip videos and, um, and uh, for stuff for beginners and stuff like that. This is I know it's on my phone, but Colin Kinnett. Oh yeah, I've seen some of his stuff. Yeah, yeah he's, he's got a huge he's channel, him. and um, I don't know. I've seen him. Yes, I've seen him now. Yeah, I I, I did meet him for and talk to him for a second. Yes. 
Yeah, he's a da and I gave him my sticker. He goes, "Oh yeah, no, I, 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 I'm familiar with your channel." I'm like, "Oh hey," <laughs> so that's that's fun. I did go over to the craft show. There were three simultaneous shows. One was a craft show, which is short for high and very expensive kitsch type items, and then there was a train show, and I did both of those as well. So that was uh, interesting, and. Um, you know, I, I bought those bottle stoppers. I got some replacement uh, uh, Craig jig. Um, what's that long driver with the square end on it? Um, those were real cheap for, for the pocket holes, like the pocket hole driver, that long thing. Got a couple of those. You can never, you can never have too many of those. And I got a bunch of safety equipment. So a lot of the, the, the gripper push block and that little foot that falls down on the regular gripper like i didn't never had one of those and um got some other things as well but uh, you know the people there are just fun 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 to hang out with and you know how this community is i mean every person is better than the next person it's like <laughs> there's nothing negative to be said about it and um you know one of the woodworkers had a, a house party probably over 100 people and um I, th they were doing some uh, raffle giveaways. Um, I know Jeff Shaw had his uh, mallet that he CNC's out of high end plywood with a leather thing that had the um, maybe I've said too much logo on it. And they gave that away. Uh, Michelle Sleeper from the um, uh, Overworld Designs and or what's it called? The. Uh, um, um, um they're, they're making show on twitch she gave away what, what was it what was it the the uh, sculpted helmet she gave a sculpted helmet away that that was fun and um tony rollo had a square a five inch square and he was giving that away and i won the square can cool. you believe it <laughs> i am now the owner of uh hillview wooden metal cool. square and nice one just yeah. Okay, I have never had tool envy, but I do now. Oh, yeah. hey, it by the is way, Matt, every bit is yes. It's making it up. Making it up, Atlanta. That's right. Making it up, Atlanta. Wow, that's and, cool. Uh, oh, it and it is dead on accurate, and it is it is gorgeous. From, I think it's number uh, one hundred, right? It is. Look, he even numbered it. Yeah. 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 Oh, number sweet. number one freaking hundred. I think that's the one you put up on the shelf and never use, and you use it right well, on now. Yes. Well, that's showpiece, man. Yeah. Some people do that, but I will put this to use <laughs> in production. I will be very careful with it, but it, it will get used, <laughs> and it will equally be treasured as much as it's as it. Will that be. won't be dangling from a two belt, will it? <laughs> <laughs> no, no well, it I will have to not. Tell you, he was on my crap list this weekend. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. Then he saw me and he went, as soon as he saw me, he goes, Oh my God, Russ, I owe you an apology. And I says, I was wondering if you forgot him. I asked him to make me one six months ago, maybe even eight months ago. Oh, and I know you have a huge first. backlog. And, yeah. And it actually, he, it just slipped through the cracks somehow and he forgot about it. And he was like, I just want you to know I'm sorry. I'm, I'm like, Look, dude, don't worry about it. And he goes, Well, when I finally realized it, I said, uh, well, if he hadn't caught, uh, hadn't notified me that by now, then he might not even want it or whatever. And I said, no. I said, actually, I had told you I wanted one. And actually, I forgot about it, too. And then after a while, I went like when you was posting, I saw like, wow, he's making other. Where's mine? And then I went back and looked. But no, it was all in fun that I told him I was putting him on my crap list because um, he's a real nice guy. But yeah, he I was going to I ordered one from him and he forgot about it. So he's going to be making it. That would just prove how terrible a woodworker I am. Um, I mean, <laughs> well, it, Matt, was, it was completely random, but I, I was thrilled to be the, the random winner. From your observations, do you think the show is as, I mean, what do you think? Was it as big as last year? Uh, was there so many vendors? I mean, give I mean some, it, I don't... it seemed like the foot traffic was a little bit less than other years. I didn't notice a huge difference, but then again, my focus is more on the, the people and um, 
you know, picking up little odds and ends and things I didn't know I wanted, but after I see them, I can't help but buy them. And um, well, I know there wasn't as many uh, woodworkers and makers in the booth this year. Did you notice that? Uh, yes. And as you said, I think a lot caught wind that the show would be different because peach tree. And I think that made a lot of people, you know, yeah. pull out, but, and well, you know, some, some people are even saying now, uh, and Zach knew about it too. Uh, some people were talking about it was going to get closed or, or not even be there or, you know, not even have the show. Uh, yeah, that's true. But right. I mean, but before we, Zach's booth with the Southern woodworkers, uh, that is, that is very impressive. I mean, how many years has he been doing that? Three now, and it's two or three. Yeah, very, very well put you together. You go ahead and chime in here, Zach. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm impressed. no. It's, it's been about yeah. It's three. We that's our third one that we've done, and we also did the clean the clean spore show, and we've done maker fairs as well. Right. Uh, that's our third um, woodworking show, though. It's a great home base for all the YouTubers. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's what, you know, that's kind of our goal when we create these booths is, to, uh, you know, it's like a mega meetup. You know, you can kind of come hang out with us, uh, come and go as you please, have a place that you can sit and hang out and talk to folks. And that's what it's about. Um, and that's, that I didn't really see a big difference. In fact, um, Friday, we had more people there on Friday than I've ever seen uh, in the previous years. Um, Friday was packed. Um, as far and, as at the booth, yeah, at the booth, and uh, also after you know after show um, uh, shenanigans. That was um, that was more than I've ever seen on a Friday because usually people come in on Friday or Saturday, right? So you don't really see folks. Um, and then um, Saturday was uh, pretty packed until about mid afternoon, and then I think folks started to uh, stray away after right. after you know mid afternoon on so Saturday. You think we had as you had as now. I'm sorry, I couldn't be as tentative in the booth as much as i uh had been you know like mm -hmm. i said they asked me over there in the gwinnett woodworkers to be over there with them but so you think we had as many pe makers there this year as we did last year uh I, I mean there was a few folks that i you know missed on seeing that i saw last year as opposed to this year but i think there's a couple factors one we we keep you know beating the dead horse here is we weren't sure if the show was going to happen i think a lot of folks just right. said you know what it's not a big deal um, the other thing is, uh, you forget, less than a month ago was WorkbenchCon, and that really kind of hurt a lot of folks because the people that are coming out of state, they've already flown down once, and they're going to fly down again for another show. So uh -huh. it does kind of, you know, hurt that as well. Um, so, but nonetheless, you know, Southern Woodworkers wanted to make sure they had an appearance there and uh, show our support. And uh, overall, I think it was great. And also, I mean, we keep saying there's it was less people there but there was more vendors there was vendors there this time that i've never seen before and i think having peach tree not in the show is actually helpful it opens up more doors for other vendors to come in there um i think epilogue you know was there which i haven't seen before um you know of course castle was there which i've never seen you know at previous events so right. you know bringing in these other folks is is a win-win for the community um if if this is, you know, the peach tree show, we know what to expect every time. When there's peach trees not there, now it's actually going to throw in that um, variation that I think is going to make make a good win for all of us. Right, and I and I think by them not being there, it allowed the running uh, the people that run the woodworking show to invite other vendors that normally they would not be able to invite. Right. They don't want to invite them because if they're selling something that Peachtree's selling, it's like a direct conflict. So they don't want to invite them. So I think that there, you were right. There was a lot of vendors there that I hadn't seen before. And I'm like, wow, this is actually pretty cool. Well, was there any CNC vendors over there? Yeah. There, well, there it was issue? just uh, Lanny, Laney's. Uh, Lane. yeah. yeah. He was the only one? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because last year, uh, I didn't make it to the Atlanta show last year either. And, uh, I went to the Houston show. They had the Houston show last year, and I went there. And of course, it's smaller, mm -hmm. but they had about three or four or five different CNC companies there mm. demonstrating their wares. And I was thinking that with Peachtree not involved as much this year, that some of that might might pick up over there. Kind of thought well, it might. This is, the wood, is this the woodworking show circuit as well in Houston. Well, see, Laney, yeah, they, they do. Okay. Uh, Laney was there last year in Houston. 
Mm -hmm. And I I talked to him there, but there was uh, two or three other companies there, CNC related. And uh, a lot of the the tools and stuff that uh, they had there, there was a lot of CNC related stuff, bits and things like that. And I kind of thought that uh, Atlanta might have a little bit more presence of the CNC crowd since uh, Peachtree wasn't going to be there. Yeah, well, unfortunately, it was just that one this time. Uh, yeah. I would like to see more CNC folks for sure, um, especially just you know, for somebody that if somebody would set up a booth with bits and stuff, I'd be I'd clean you guys out. <laughs> Same here. I do. <laughs> so, now that depends on what bits. If it was like the high end bits, like white side and stuff like then that, then you have one. I'll have one then. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> one. Well, yeah. in, in Houston, uh, um, uh, the guys who were doing the the, the bits was uh, were a man of bits. Okay. Yeah. All and right. uh, there was a ton of, and they they had a show price. They gave you twenty five percent off, so it wasn't too too bad. See, a lot but, of those folks though are in IWF. Um, mm-hmm. So Man of Tools there, CMT is there, you mm-hmm. know, Fest Tool, all those guys are at IWF. Um, you know, Axiom is there, Iconic is there, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's the big show for all those guys in Atlanta. So I think, you know, yeah. again, it's it they have to judge like judge which one they want to do. They can't do them all. So I think IWF is a bigger impact for those folks yeah. than coming to a woodworking show. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. I just want to point out Steve Good is out there in the chat. And Steve, sorry, bud, but Gwinnett Woodworkers told me I did such a good job that they're not going to need you anymore. So <laughs> that's a shame. Oh, I, was just, I was going to, I was going to say something about that. But, uh, I never, I'm just kidding. I'm I never, just kidding. I, I never I saw Steve Good take two days to work on a little horse. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't scroll when he's there. So what are you talking about? He doesn't have, he doesn't touch a scroll saw when he's there. But anyway, oh, he was doing it when I was on. Anyway, I just had to goose him because of, and I, I hope he, uh, Steve was having some medical issues, and I know that's one of the reasons he didn't make it to Atlanta. So, my good friend, I hope you are uh, doing better. You, you know, are you feeling a lot better? Because I know, like I said, you weren't doing real good the last time I talked to you, and that's why he. That's the reason he didn't come to Atlanta was medical issues. So, consider me goosed. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> Good. <laughs> That's um, great. There was one more thing I wanted to point out is uh, yeah. we, there was a booth there for the wounded warriors. Um, it was, we had four pin churning or lays uh, set up for pin churning. Uh, anybody in the show that wanted to do a pin churn for kids, they would sell the kit to the kids. And then um, eight of the $10 for the kit would go to wounded warrior. So, Think about that next year if you guys are you know can do pin churning and that kind of stuff. Um, that'd be really awesome for you guys to to be there and help out for the Wooden Warriors. I think that was a really cool cool thing. Yes, I saw that. Um, there were some complaints from some of the vendors because they were paying for the kits. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, from my understanding, the kits were some really really nice kits. Um, and then you have to look at, for. yeah. And then you have to look at the part of the money was going to the forward or toward the wounded warriors too. So, yeah, from my understanding, eight of the ten dollars went to wounded warriors. Yeah, so, that's what I. That's what I. Heard. Um, so I think it was really awesome. And again, like if you guys come next year or you go to any of those shows, you know, feel free to sign up to uh, help out. I think that was a really wonderful thing to do. Yeah. There's a question in the chat. What is IWF? Uh, it's like, uh, was it International Woodworking Fair? Federation or fair. Federation. Yeah. Um, it's like, the, it's the behemoth of woodworking shows, but it's a lot of big business um, woodworking show. It's not really, you know, small, small scale stuff, but you'll still see, you know, like your micro jigs and that kind of stuff there. Yeah. Uh, that, not only that, they, they have a lot of um, upper echelon um, classes, and I think you have to actually pay for the classes. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, they have machines that can take a car and or make a whole car out of you know plywood. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's like it's almost industrial, commercial industrial type woodworking show. But uh, yeah, they have classes there now, which I want to point out. The woodworking class, uh, woodworking show has a few classes that you pay for, but they're like earlier before the show. But the classes that run during the show are all free. So you can go into any of the booths and watch any of these classes. Now I will let you know that somebody said that if you want to watch all the series of classes, 
it actually takes longer than the two days. In other words, if you sit through every one of the classes, they have uh, a couple of rotations of what they tell you. So you'd have to go to the next city and sit through the classes again to be able to get them all. Anyway, Steve, um, a good said, uh, what do you say first? He says, I got him. He, I got him goosed. And he says, they say I'm going to die. They just don't know when. <laughs> and then he said, I had a foot problem. It's getting better. Yeah, that's um, not healed, but better. Okay. Yeah. Cause I knew he wasn't feeling good. Cause, uh, and uh, because they were originally planned that I and he was going to be in the Gwinnett Woodworkers booth this year, which would have been great to have him there. So, I always get me and him are very good friends. We've been friends for 15 years or more and uh, always got to rib him a little bit. I mean, come on. It wouldn't be a uh, fun if there were a little joust between, between each one of us. So uh, rumor has it though, his, his job at uh, the woodworking show is safe. Yeah. It's safe. <laughs> it's well, safe. well, Steve, uh, I, I, I just want to say, don't put your foot up there anymore. <laughs> Yeah, if you put it up where it shouldn't have been, <laughs> uh, maybe you need to consider not doing that again. <laughs> um, Unless it's Russ, and then go for it. <laughs> y'all, y'all watch Russ if he gets up walking funny. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> well, now I've got a little bit of news for all of y'all, and I probably shouldn't be saying this, but. Uh, <clears throat> my news came comes from a very good source, yeah. a very reliable source, That's and cool. this is what they told me about the woodworking shows. Is uh, they actually uh, the woodworking shows was kind of worried when Peachtree said they weren't going to travel this year, uh, as to if they could even make it. Um, I, and that's not the right way to put it, or how much damage it was going to have to the woodworking shows, not it, forget what I said before, if it, we, they could even make it just how much they were going to be able to produce for the shows. So by the Atlanta show, it was very good. In other words, they had realized that they had come through all these shows by the Atlanta show and had done very well for themselves. Matter of fact, several of the vendors that I'd talked to that I know personally, told me they had done either good or better on most shows uh, this year than they'd ever done. So, I mean, they'd even equal or even better before. So that's, that's a good thing. Now uh, they have been wanting to transfer on out to the West and some of their conflict is that Peachtree don't want to push out West from my understanding. They want to stay on the East Coast, which is rightly so, because in Atlanta, it's easy for running them up and down the East Coast rather than going out so far west. So this might be an opportunity for the woodworking show to start pushing out west now that they know that uh, they can make it, so to speak, without Peachtree. Uh, maybe they will start pushing out west more and saying, you know, we're going out west uh, if you want to come with us, fine. If not, we're going out west anyway. So that's going to be something that would be very interesting to see because I know I've got a lot of people that I hear say that, why don't you come out to uh, Nevada or why don't you come out here or come out, you know, to other places like that? And they don't go out there. Do they, they still go out? They don't even still go out to Texas, do they, Russ? You're muted, Russ. So. Uh uh, I'm not sure if they do or not. Uh, and, uh, I think Zach was asking me, was it uh, the the regular, uh, like the Atlanta Woodworker Show? And I got to thinking about it. And uh, I remember the title being something like the Texas Woodworking Show. Yeah, I so think, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't think they go out to Texas. I think they used to, mm -hmm. and then they stopped. Well, that might be relived now. They might come out and branch out further west, like Texas, Oklahoma, and a few of the states out there. Be great if they did. Yeah, so that's something to believe it or not. That, yeah, that, that's uh, the only place I like to get my dead gum phone brushes from. Yeah, they uh, seem they they last. You know, it's ridiculous, but they they last. Yeah, uh, Jimbo says there should be a show in Tampa this year. I won't. I don't know until they post their list of shows. 
uh, they haven't gotten around to that part. So I don't know if there's going to be one out in, in Tampa this year. But uh, uh, who said they better leave, drive? Uh, Jim Bashir says they better leave Indy alone, <laughs> Indianapolis alone. So, yeah. But I, I, from everybody I talked to, they were like, yeah, it's going great. They had a good, uh, good time. Well, I didn't get to the New England show this year, but from what I've heard, it was a pretty good show. Yeah. So. Well, you know, thank goodness for the Sheraton because, you know, we sort of made the lobby our home and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> security dropped off garbage bags because we're carting in pizza. We have our own bar. <laughs> we're scooping <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> right, I'm going to have to read Steve Good's terrible writing or terrible spelling because uh, I think he said Kansas. It's K A B S A S. I think he means Kansas City. Anyway, he said Kansas City is as far west as they go. Okay, I did not know that. Kansas, yes. He corrected it as Kansas. That spell check is hell, ain't it, Steve? But, uh, yeah, Kansas is as far as they go, so out west. And I know there, there's a bunch of people who would love to see them further out west. So, uh, yeah, the uh, Sheraton, I love I love their setup where they're at, at the Cobb Galleria and the Sheraton Hotel. Yeah. I mean, it's perfect. We are, literally, you can walk across the street or they have a, um, what they call the thing that goes over the road? Uh, the walk, yeah, Skywalker. Walkway, yeah, Skywalker walkway. So you can either walk across the street at the stoplights or you can go across the Skyway. Or skywalk. You can illegally oh. walk across the what seems to be like a highway. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> It's like six lanes, and those people don't stop. You so, have to be fast. <laughs> yeah, I uh, took my chances last year and went across it one time. That and not me. I'll, I'll, I'll go around the skywalk. Like, you know, I'm going to go the skywalk next time. So, and mm -hmm. the skywalk even has. Uh, Chris was with us. It even has an elevator yeah. that goes up to the skywalk, and you can walk over. So. I took and, one, one look at the street and there's no way I was going that way. <laughs> yeah. And it dumps right out to the back of the motel. So yeah. we're, I mean, well, you're if real. you're smart and don't take the escalators down in the, to the main lobby area, you could just walk right out those double doors and skip the whole. Yeah. 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 You can't go in that way there. They only push out, but yeah. <laughs> Little tricks you pick up once you have a couple of these under your belt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I really enjoy where it is at i mean there's plenty of restaurants to eat yeah. there's plenty of things to see this year they had a train and when i say trains i mean like model train exhibits there which i went to that yeah, and fun. then they had uh yeah. what was it a it was a craft thing craft show but it was high-end stuff it, they had some woodworking there too uh, it's a lot of clothing and jewelry but outside of that it was sculpture and artwork and um, wow. that type of thing. Yeah. Someone did, um, lamps that had wood. He said he took bands. he would bandsaw out odd shapes and then sand them to look like stones. And he would just stack them up on the, on the lamp and you could spin each piece and he didn't put any finish on it whatsoever. It was just natural wood. And yeah, wow. he was selling them for 700 bucks a piece. Sterling is out there in the chat. And he said, I had a great time at the show and think the new vendors was a hit. I talked to as many people as I always do. It's about the people for me. Yeah, I agree. It's about the people for me. And I had, uh, uh, that's one of the uh, things, one of the reasons uh, I went, so to speak. Give me one second here. And Does Sterling uh, have any of his supply of, uh, in, uh, what do you call that? Adult beverages. <laughs> yeah. Yes, is he that, brought the bar. Thank you, Sterling, again for that. Is, is JP five uh, jet fuel? <laughs> <laughs> it was for me that one time, one time only, buddy. I'm with you, man. <laughs> well, this is this is the brand right right here. I have it as a pencil cup, but the <laughs> old smoky moonshine. Yeah. Good stuff. Highly recommend. Yeah. The and of course, half of that yeah. ounce roll the eyes in the back of my head. So uh, Sterling will tell you, you take two parts this, two parts that, like he like three different ingredients, and it makes the moonshine like ten times better. Well, Matt, how did that experiment go? That you all was going to do that frozen thing? Oh, they couldn't get the the liquid nitrogen. Yeah, the plan was to get liquid nitrogen and make dipping dots 
but instead of using normal dipping dot stuff, they were going to use uh, what was it? The um, the the alcoholic uh, white Russian. They we're going to have white Russians, but in dipping dot form. Right. But uh, that's apparently a very hard logistical puzzle to solve because there's time limit. You can't. This stuff doesn't. So you have to get it right before you use it, and then you have to handle it properly. I mean, it's not for you the have, have a, a <laughs> right container to put. now it'll last oh, you okay. have, to have the right container to put it in yeah but when i say the last it's not going to last for days yeah. and it'll last yeah. for like i think there's a 42 or 72 eight hour or something 48 to 72 hours something like that but anyway but you have to have the proper container to put it in i mean because this stuff is like 600 800 degrees or whatever below zero Wow. Yeah. So much so that you can take uh, and put a rose in the stuff and pull the rose out and drop it on the ground and it shot, shatter like glass. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's no joke, but it would be awesome if we had dip and dots in white Russian form. Yes, How would cool be. would that be? Would be Zach. Yes. Um, now that the uh, giant nutcracker that was from um, Vincent, Vincent. Mm -hmm. Okay, that wasn't from Jackman. No. Okay, Vincent. Okay. It was a uh, yeah. It was kind of. I, I think they started actually building it around the same time period, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, or Vincent built it independently of not knowing that Jackman was building his. But okay. once his came out, they actually started uh, coordinating between each other to kind of finish it off, which I thought was pretty pretty cool. Oh, it was it was awesome. Trust me. Yeah. I saw it was awesome. Uh, I'll talk about some of the other stuff that was in the booth that you had there. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, typically we, you know, our booth is always set up to allow folks to bring stuff. Um, you know, people that are in the Southern Woodworkers, which I thank you guys for, for bringing things. But uh, Nick from uh, Run CNC uh, brought his little uh, open builds um, uh, CNC. It's, you know, I think it will do like four inches by four inch. It's just a nice kind of you know, cute little CNC. Um, and what was really cool was that he would make these little, um, you know, name plates for kids. And, um, you know, we like to get kids involved in the woodworking. So, you know, that was a really cool way of doing that. And for, uh, for Nick, it was, you know, just extra PVC he had laying around. So it worked out pretty well. Um, and then we had some, um, uh, we brought, you know, I bring, I always bring the connect Four. um, it's always a good uh, game for people to kind of break the ice, um, we gave away some wall control, actually, to wall that control. That Connect Four scared the crap out of me. <laughs> drop, I was standing there talking. They dropped some of those yeah, yeah. down in there, and you know how they make that noise when yep. they hit? Yeah, and I was standing right there. I was like, holy crap. I think that's the kind of the point, right? Yeah, <laughs> we I, want people to be, like, looking, you know? Yeah. Um, so, you know, the Connect Four was always a good hit. Um, wall control provided us with two um, panels, um, or two panel kits, rather, um, which are two panels each, so four panels total. Uh, we gave those away, which was super awesome. Um, I always, you know, like people to play around with some. And what's cool about wall control is they're actually local here in Georgia, and uh, I always like to support the local uh, folks if we can. Um, let's see who else. Daryl brought some really cool um, bowls that he's turned, um, which was really really cool. Um, and then of course I brought the teardrop. Um, you know, it's the same as you've seen last year. I haven't really done much to it, but. Uh, you know, it is a it is always a, a, a hit or at least an eye turner when they walk into a woodworking show and when people are like asking me why it's here. <laughs> so that's always fun. Um, but again, uh, I also want to thank everybody that's uh, come out to the booth and helped out in the booth. I really appreciate it. Um, it's 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 a lot of hard, hard work to do it by myself. So anybody that can help is, is greatly appreciated. And also, you know, for the guys that actually helped in the Southern Woodworkers that helped do the Wounded Warriors, I really appreciate it as well. Yeah, um, I tried to come over there as much as I could, but um, like I said, the Gwinnett Woodworkers wanted me over there with them, and I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, had a, I had a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, uh, I literally talked so much uh, Friday and Saturday that at night, my horse, my voice was hoarse. Yeah, yeah. Time. I, I mean, mine was getting there too. Yeah. Um, we were actually in the center. You were up front, but we were actually kind of in the center of the show, which was kind of cool. Yeah. 
You were on the, like an end cap. Yeah, like eye. an end cap. Yeah, it was actually where I think Peach Tree was last year, kind of in the middle. So that's kind of where we were. Yeah. Um, so it's a little bit different. In fact, a lot of folks that came, they always go to the wall because we're always usually to the far right hand side of the wall. And um, this time we were in the middle, which is kind of a shake up. Um, JP, which is Jamie Page, was there. Yep. Uh, he was actually probably the furthest person ever or one of the farthest persons ever yep. to come to the woodworking show. JP lives over in England. So he flew all the way to Atlanta to be there at the woodworking show with some of us. So, uh, yeah, that is like just incredible. I mean, that's got to be like yeah. two or 3,000 miles probably that he traveled to get over there. Yeah, and usually Frank usually comes to. Um, yeah. But Frank he didn't. Samando? Yeah, he didn't make any projects. Yeah. 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 But he was not there this time. Yeah. He, uh, I, something come up, he posted that he couldn't come this year. I don't remember what it was, Bo. Yeah. He uh, usually takes the, takes the cake. Yeah. 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 He's coming. Uh, I think he's over in, um, what country is he from? I can't remember, but it's the same country that, uh, Trump's wife is from. Slovenia. Just say Slovenia, right? I think. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, one yeah. of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. Is oh, he is. Yeah. Uh, I I have a. She lived here for about seven years, and uh, we still keep in touch. And uh, uh, really intelligent, talented. Uh, and while she was here, uh, when she first came here, she was working as a makeup artist. And but then when she was in New York and then she married here and, and then moved into my area and she was already a really talented cook, but she got into uh, working for a lady that makes some absolute wonderful pies uh, and all kinds of pastry. And so uh, Maya, when she went back to Slovenia, she started up a business making American pies and, and pastries, and she's doing great. So, uh, uh, somebody out there just pointed out that I have 48 people watching and only 28 thumbs up. Oh, it just jumped to 30 thumbs up. So, if you wouldn't mind making sure you put that thumbs up over there to that you approve of, uh, um, of the show and like watching it so i appreciate that very much yes um frank uh, i've met him the last two years that he's came and uh he's a really nice guy i really enjoy talking to him and everything and i love watching his channel he has a very very good youtube channel and does a lot he of stuff over there. really good cutting boards and stuff too he, yeah he does a lot of good work yeah a lot of good work so i enjoy so I was just got one heck of a table saw too. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> they, now that saw that he has is a sliding table saw. It's actually not like you push the wood through it. The wood is on a slider and slides. Yeah, through it. yeah. So that's a really nice, nice. Uh, Paul John's life is out there. JP Woodworking, Michelle Marcou. Uh, up oh, the thumbs up are starting to climb. Thank you guys. Uh, Jamie Page. Uh, Sterling Davis. Uh, see Bob Lee's word shop. I got to see Bob Lee this year. You know, Bob Lee, uh, was sick there for a while. I was in the hospital. So yeah. he was out and it's good to see him out and about. And he was there at the woodworking show him and his wife. I think he finally retired and him and his wife are kind of like touring because I saw some pictures of where he was at the Corvette museum and mm -hmm. some of the Corvettes that he had seen. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there were so many people I wanted to meet. I wanted to meet. I wanted to meet Bob Lee. I wanted to meet Jamie. I've already met you. I'm tired of you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, life just didn't uh, work out. Yeah, I know you wanted to see me. And and Bobby Duke was there as well. Yep. Oh, I want, yeah, I would love to have seen and met yep. Bobby Duke. You know, no, what was I, you know, I want to give him a little bit of props because he actually helped one of the other Southern woodworkers. He lost his phone. Uh, one of the gentlemen, I forgot his name off the top of my head, but he's got a, a trachea um, and he can't, you know, he can't speak really well. I know who you're talking about. 
Um, yep. He lost his cell phone, and Bobby Duke actually helped him find his cell phone. We, you know, between he, he and I, we tried to call Uber. We tried to call the local uh, hotel, and um, finally, we were able to get the phone. And he actually walked him out to go find his phone, which I thought was super nice of Bobby Duke to do that. So, thanks, man. Uh, Bobby Duke, I, I hadn't, of course, I haven't got to meet him, but it's just he has this this presence about him that you just know you're going to love him. Oh yeah. He's like some people I know. He's a great guy. Uh, he helped me. I talked about some of his sculpture and we were talking about Millie putt and this Sculpey stuff and the product that he used. And, you know, he gave me about 15 minutes of good information on what to do, some tips, how to make it go easier. Uh, the pluses and minuses of the different products. I was like, he's very, very generous and and a great guy, as everyone's saying. Love me the Dookie. Cool. I got a couple of uh. Here, let me do this first. So there, I got a couple of picks I want to show and do a little bragging real quick. I'm sorry, but um. This is uh and I and the reason I'm doing this is also for a shout out to the Gwinnett Woodworkers. They were the most gracious, uh, wonderful people to be with this week uh, or last weekend. Uh, had a really great time. Uh, a great, great, great uh, group of woodworkers. Not only they, uh, I mean, there's a lot. They had a lot of scrollers there, but uh, they actually set up and take your picture. And then they turn it into a puzzle and give you that puzzle for free. So they do that. Had like three or four people that were there doing that. They had Hans on the end uh, with his scroll saw doing some stuff. And then me and then all of the st stuff that they had on display and show. And then Rob Austin was there. Uh, but let me screen share and just real quick. And that is the... Uh, fantastic banner that they made for me. Can y'all see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Did, did you get to take the banner home? No, they're going to keep it. Uh, Rob said they're going to keep it for next year. They want me back next year. Ooh, I think you better have the agent call them. Yep. So I thought there was a, a way to change from picture to picture on this, but. Well, uh, you need to change one picture and change that last name and I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> This is actually the saw that I was at right here, uh, over here to the right. This is right where I was at. The sign was in front of me. And then this is uh, Rob and I and part of the booth. I think uh, Steve Wood sign is bigger. Uh, they had, no, it's not. Uh, <laughs> they had uh, a guy here turning a lot, uh, and then they over here on the left side, which you can't see, they had a guy over there turning also. Uh, this booth was actually very small compared to what uh, the Gwinnett. This is Rob Austin, by the way, who invited me up, and I stayed actually, I flew up there on Thursday and stayed with him at his house Thursday and Thursday night. We spent the night and uh, played in his huge. Wood shop. His, he's got the, like the Taj Mahal of all wood shops. But they had turning going on. They had scrolling going on. It was a uh, just a. Uh, this is where I was set up, and uh, just a lot of good stuff going on uh, there. So was Nova there? I don't think Nova was there. Uh, no. Nova wasn't there. No, because Daryl was there, and I remember talking to him and saying, "Yeah, Nova didn't have a booth there this year." So, yeah. And this uh, there are some vendors that fell off like that. I think they were kind of worried about what was going on. Uh, you know, so it is what it is. I mean, <clears throat> uh, what the, Jeff Robinson wants to know: what I purchased this year at the show. I didn't purchase nada, zero, because I flew and I had a suitcase. So, therefore, anything I had had to weigh less because I was right on the border with my suitcase of, on the wait for the plane. And it ended up costing me to get back because I had to pay extra because I did carry a few things back. 
uh, the guy gave me a scroll NATO, the newer scroll NATO and a drill NATO. And a, and then I had all these drill bits to bring back, which I haven't even shown you all those yet. So, uh, yeah. So it was like I had to pay an extra 40 bucks to get my suitcase on the plane. I had to <laughs> Yeah, you and I didn't buy any of it. It was just pe people kept giving me stuff, and I'm like, "Time out! Yeah. I'd love it, but I can't take no more." It's like I, I, I didn't fly. I, I flew this year. I mean, and I, let me tell you about that. That was really pretty nice. The only hitch to this thing is, is coming home. I had to go through Atlanta Airport security, and oh my god, it took me an hour to go through their security. I can go through Tampa airport security in 15, 20 minutes, the max took me an hour to get through airport security in Atlanta, literally thousands of people in front of you. Yeah. It was like, I like, I don't know if this is worth it or not. So they I say didn't have that problem. They say if well, you get TSA approved that it's quicker. So I'm going to find yeah. out what that TSA approved is and get it. So that's what I did. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have that problem, but then again, my ID says Homeland Security on it. So, <laughs> well, why don't you send me your and ID? And I'll use it next time. Not so. that it really works for crop, but you know, every now and then it's it's moved me up the line. <laughs> uh, Sterling Davis said he's got a run, good night all. So, uh, hi, Sterling. Hi, uh, Sterling. I've got a, I, I want to give away something, and I'm trying to figure out how to do it. We need a question. Well, actually, we need what did I say. Four questions, or or ask or at well yeah never mind. I was gonna say ask one question and the first four people that answer it, but they would know the answer then. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be quick. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, that's yeah. We can't do that. We can't do that. We can't. I know what you're saying. Oh, that that was a good idea, but unfortunately, well, it would be quick. I, I don't know about how good it would be, but pick a number between one and a hundred, and whoever in the chat room puts that number down first wins or the first the four the four closest to that number or yeah. overlaps or you know something like that yeah we could do that that's what nick nimmin does on his live stream and it the numbers run. they fly up so fast you can't even that's read that's them true. well we don't have that many people that's all right yeah, i mean let's do that well, let's do uh what we've got, let's say there's like 40 people in the chat. So I'm going to think of a number and I'm going to write it down. People are dropping numbers already. I know. And, and if you keep dropping Pick numbers, you're disqualified. you're disqualified. Pick a card, any card. Yeah, you're disqualified. So those of you, I'm going to go back through and disqualify y'all for all dropping numbers already. I'm going to write down, let's say 50. One to 50. And after the show, I'll show my uh, people on the chat what the number or in the uh, panel, what the number was so that they'll know. Can my guess be the golden ratio, 1.618? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> All right, so it's 1 to 50. All right, can we go? And, uh, yeah, and I've got my number picked out. So now what you're going to do is may email your number to contest at simplywoodencreations.com. See, so all you popping up there, it ain't going to work. Oh, we're all doing it in the chat. Oh, you want to do it in the chat? Yeah. All yeah. right. Y'all I mean, are going to have to, I, there's no way with them popping up like that. I'm going to be able to tell what numbers. Pick a letter. Number, How long is it going to take you to open 50 emails? <laughs> yeah, there's no way. I don't understand what you're saying. If I tell them to go, then y'all are going to help me watch and see. Yeah, we'll one. watch it. No, oh, you're, you're on your own, Russ. You're on your own. You're on right. your own. I'll, right. put the, I'll, put the, I'll put the number. Okay. Everybody got that on the interior chat? The number is uh no, I'm not gonna say yeah. that. <laughs> all right, chat room, have at it. I all do right, not see that right, number. All, all right. Uh, on your march, the last person that I'm looking at is Dan Ingy from Dan Ingy Woodworking. Uh so uh 
so on your mark, get set. And I need four people that are close to that and the closest to that number. Holy smokes, man. There's already 20 million numbers out there. <laughs> I know. No, we're starting with Aussie Man says, Good Russ, pick someone. Okay, Anyone? Good Russ, just pick someone. There you go. Yeah, everybody below him now is uh, capable. Nobody has it yet. Nope. So is it is it the number and then the th after the number or before the number? Like okay. Bulldozer. Oh, bulldozer. Oh, bulldozer. Got it. You know what? Yeah. Bulldozer got it. All right, uh, bulldozer. I don't know what JP put, but it got hidden. Bu bulldozer D10, you're the winner. Hello, Patrick's yeah. bulldozer uh, B10, uh, D10, you're the winner. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. It rhymes. Oh. It rhymes with 33. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 33. 33. I need you to send me. Is the next one 66? <laughs> Uh, Bulldozer D10, uh, D I say, need you to send me the information contest at uh, simplywoodencreations.com. Your information to there. So, and what we're giving away is scroll saw. Um, <laughs> scroll saw. Yes. Hey, Aussie awesome Man said he put three twice. Does that count? <laughs> no. What we're doing is um, my good friend, Carl Taylor from over at Scroll sawvideo.com let me screen share real quick I'll see an early one it's 10 it looks even younger it's really in the long way to pick up two thousand dollar cars look at them is that mrs russ all right scroll saw video.com this is the guy that is donating all these drill bits uh, Carl Taylor from over here at scrollsawvideo.com. So he's donated 100 of these drill bits. They're 564, which is a little over of an eighth of an inch. So since there are uh, 100 of them, what I am going to do is break them down into four packs of 25. Let me get back up. Four packs of 25, so we'll have four winners. So you will get 25 of these uh, drill bits uh, sent to you. Like I said, they're a little over an eighth of an inch for scroll sawing. That's what we're going to get be given away. So, all right, the next number. I already wrote it down. I'm sure putting it into the ch yes. chat. So, all right, go for Got it. it. Got it. All right, chat room, you're on. Chat room, you're on. Anything after our awesome wood things post? It says Patrick's Wood Shop. Oh, uh, the one with the taco. Okay. Yep, the one with the taco. Anything after that? Any number after that you can go for. And the numbers are scrolling by. Yes. Uh oh. No. Come on, guys. Keep going. No wiener okay. yet. Yeah. A lot of numbers out there, guys. Come on. Yeah, come on. Come on. Between you one and 50. Yet. Between one and 50. I'll even narrow it down between one and 40. <laughs> between one and 40. There it is. Yeah, hey, he's got there it. Aussie, Aussie man. man. You're the winner. Aussie man, uh, what did he put? 26. The number. He, had one. <laughs> he oh, put he two and six together. He put the number. <laughs> Aussie man, oh, I, it just now scrolled by where I could see it. So Aussie man, 26. <laughs> I'm hoping I can get these to you, Aussie man. Don't give it much, right? Hey, some uh, ginger one too. He's got twenty six in there too. Uh, uh, hey, uh, Aussie man, send me the information to contest at simplywoodencreations.com. Not if I send it first. I gotta send. Uh, I gotta print me a new thing. This thing's getting kind of war. We're out. All right. Scroll, so, scroll, sorry, new one. Let's. Yeah, I need to make one more permanent. 
So let's make this number uh, This is the next number guys Okay Alright go for it Anything after Dave Hart Engage uh, How many guesses per turn Hit it Let's what? go Come on guys give us another number that's Let's two. We got two number. more sets of uh, twenty-five drill bits. I can send between you between one and forty. Yes, one and forty. Not yet. There it is. There it is. John's life. All John's life. If, they, if they're friends, if they're friends with Zach, discount it. Throw it out. <laughs> well, and, they keep, and they keep putting numbers up there. Oh man, yeah, yeah, there's, right. up there's a delay. Three. I was not <laughs> helping yeah, anybody right. out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Paul John's life sent me an email to contest at simplywoodencreations.com. It's uh, you can quick now, guys. It's, it's over. <laughs> that's, like, that's a delay, huh? Yeah, that's <laughs> a delay. Yeah. Uh, all right, we've got so, uh, one more. Yeah. You have 20 more, right? 25 more. I have 25 more. Why one more. Why, why don't we make it exciting and, and say, okay, one drill bit to 25 people? No. I'm no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's Save it the, on the back of my postcard. Here's the next number, guys. Got it. Uh, which one? Oh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> uh, so uh, anything after... Jim Bashir says that's a uh, big hawker on his email sign. <laughs> yeah, that's no, it's not that big, was. It's something that dripped onto the sign. First off, the C from contest is gone, and then I think this is uh, some kind of animal got grabbed on my sign. <laughs> so it's contest that simply wouldn't create since got Tom. So go for it. Jim Brown. Oh. <laughs> yep. Got a winner. Ding 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 ding. Jim Brown. Jim Brown. Jim Brown. Brown. Ms. Bender number nine, number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. All right, Jim Brown. Jim Brown, send me an email to contest at simplywoodencreations.com with all your information. And then I will get these. Like I said, here's the there is 100 of them in here. They came in this little tiny box, and I was curious as to they say the 564 saw them. I was curious, I didn't know how many was in there, so I took them out of the wax paper and dumped them into this thing and count them. And there's actually 100, so there's four winners. Each of y'all will get 25 drill bits. And that, like I said, that comes from Carl Taylor over at scrollsawvideo.com. I appreciate him doing that very, very, very much. Uh, but he was there and he was like, here, I bought all these drill bits. Here, here's a couple of boxes given away on your show. Wow. And I was like, wow, when I counted them, like 100? No, I'm going to break those up and give them to more people. So, All right, guys. Well, we're through for the night. It's 914. I appreciate all of y'all being here. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, being in Atlanta this weekend, uh, getting to see Matt and Zach and Sterling and JP. And the list goes on and on and on about how many people I saw this weekend. Uh, but uh, Rob Austin, he's always great company. I stayed at his house uh, Thursday night and saw him. And uh, we went out in his shop. And I, that's where I set up and to do the uh, scroll saw stuff he had the i brought the patterns just glued them to his um uh baltic birch and then we drilled the holes in them for the next day but uh i really enjoyed all of it and i really appreciate y'all on the panel as far as brenda chris dixon uh katie matt uh, al paul sure. russ and zach thank you all for all being on the show tonight i appreciate it very much and uh, we will see you next week. And there's only one thing we have left to do, and that is just get me sawdust. Lots of sawdust all around me and everywhere. I like it flying mm -hmm. all around my shop and even in yeah. my beard and hair. Good night, everybody. Good night, Thank everyone. You. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.
Finish your drinks. Remember, you don't have to go home, but you cannot stay here. <laughs> don't forget. Go go to my channel and win that album art. Ciao. <laughs>